No child left behind. I'm, I'm going to ask you just three things. No child left behind and immigration. Can you tackle those two first? Well, uh, from no child left behind, let's just talk about education, because obviously that's an education question. I want to get the federal government out of education. They, they, they've screwed it up. I'd like to abolish the entire Department of Education. It's a waste of money. And the biggest problem with education right now, at least on the higher education, I mean, local schools, local education is not for as much to do with the federal government. That's problems with the state government. I'm not running for, for, for governor. But the biggest problem in higher education is that it's so expensive. And the only reason it's expensive is because of the government. So if we can get the government out of the business of subsidizing higher education, of loaning money to people to pay inflated tuitions, and of guaranteeing private loans, we won't have a problem with high-cost education because it won't exist anymore. I mean, the funny thing is the only reason that students need to borrow money is because governments have made tuition so expensive that they now need the loans. Let me ask you once again. No child left behind. I don't, I don't care about the, the, the college. I'm ag look, I'm against that federal program. Okay. I, I'm against any fed There's nothing in the federal constitution that says the government has anything to do with education. The word education, schools, it doesn't appear in the constitution. It is not a federal function. Education should be handled locally in communities. The federal government should stay out of it, and they should leave our money here <coughs> so we can educate our children better. But my point is, in higher education, they've screwed it up if we simply took the government out of, you know, out of the loan business, you know, colleges would have no choice but to slash tuitions, to streamline, and to give Americans low-cost education. Because right now, the only beneficiaries of government aid to education are the universities. You're because talking like a senator right now. Just stick with the question. Well, that's the part of it. The second and question... Immigration? On immigration, look, I am a big uh, uh, supporter of immigration. I believe in legal immigration. I think the government should make it legal or easier for people to legally come to this country. But what I don't want is people to come to this country and, and go on the dole. I don't want people coming here and going on welfare or food stamps or whatever it is. I want people working. Either they can work for somebody else, they can start their own business. So maybe if we can do something like, you know, you want to come into the country, Fine, you have no right for five or ten years to any social programs. You can't get on this, so if you can't find a job, then go home. But if you can find a job, if you can do something productive, then you can stay. And then last the last one. Last one. Last one. Could you say something on the positive side and the, the negative side about Rob and Linda? I mean, well, they I have, mean what, what good I, ideas you know, they have and what would you do different from them? Well, look, as far as Rob Simmons is concerned, you know, I mean, I've met him several times. You know, I respect the fact that he's been in the military, that he's been in the CIA. I think he has an interesting background. But, you know, as far as his six years in, you know, the House of Representatives, you know, he was part of the problem. And I don't see how he's now part of the solution. I know that a lot of the things that Rob Simmons says, I completely agree with. I mean, he's saying a lot of the right things. But to me, I think that's the politician in him. He knows what you know, the, the which way the wind is blowing, and he knows what he needs to say. But, you know, if he goes to the Senate, he's going to be just like any other, you know, liberal Republican that's in office, and, and even some of the conservative Republicans. They're not doing anything. I, I think we really need the equivalent of a revolution in the Republican Party. I think they've led us in the wrong direction, and I think somebody needs to go there and really work to change it. I just don't think Rob Simmons is the guy to do it. I think if he gets to the Senate, he's going to be happy that he's there, and he's just going to fit in. And he's not going to make waves, and he's, he's, he's just not going to do what we need to do, even if he actually believes the things that he says. But I don't know that he does, because, again, I still think he's a politician, and that's what politicians do. They figure out what people want to hear, and then that's what they say. You know, as far as Linda, you know, I think, you know, her and her husband, I think, did a very good job, you know, growing a business, whether you think it's, you know, a, a, a business that's socially redeeming or not. There are a lot of people that apparently like it, and they did it very well. They, they made a lot of money. Um, but, you know, Linda McMahon, I think she's right in a lot of things that she says in that we don't need a career politician. We need a business person. We need an entrepreneur. We need an outsider who hasn't been part of this corrupt process. I agree 100%. I just don't think that she's the person for the job. I mean, yeah, she's a business person, but, you know, it's show business. I mean, she, she's a wrestling promoter. I mean, that's fine, but this is, we have a serious economic problem in this country, and I don't think that that, I think it's outside her realm of understanding. And, and I don't think that if she gets to the Senate, again, I think she's just more likely to sit in. I think she wants the prestige of the office. I think that, you know, I think that she thinks it would be nice that maybe she'd get more respect in Greenwich if she was a senator. 
uh, you know. And, and I, I think she's a nice lady, you know, and maybe her heart's in the right place, but I, can't, I just don't think that she really has the understanding or the ability to convince the other side. I mean, imagine Lynn McMahon is going to get there, and she's going to try to tell everybody else what to do. It's like, well, why, how do you know? I mean, what's your back? Why should I listen to you about the economic problems? What do you know about it? So I just think that of the people who are running, I'm the most likely to actually get this job done from my perspective. Because I actually think that we are on the verge of an economic collapse. I mean, this, this is like, this is it. This is, this, is, this is a major, major catastrophe that's coming. And somebody needs to be in, in Washington to make sure that, A, we don't repeat this mistake again. Because we can't afford it. And that to let people know what, what, what we've done wrong and what has to be done. And get them to understand, when somebody from Wall Street comes to Washington and says, we've got to bail out uh, this firm, and I can convince them, no, we don't, that we would have been better off letting them fail. We didn't have to bail out all these Wall Street firms. We could have let them go bankrupt. It would have been better. We didn't have to bail out General Motors. We didn't have to have bail out Chrysler. The country would have been better off if we let them fail. The automobile industry would have been better off had we let them fail. Somebody has to explain to the other senators why capitalism works. I don't know that Linda or Rob actually understand it.